Mainline Pokemon games have hosted 17 evil characters who commonly antagonize homeland security in their respective regions, as well as their inhabitant small children. 17 trainers who may lead an evil organization or may be going solo, but were just feeling a little bit devious, ranging from people who are a lovable nuisance to the public to men who want to shank up small children and reset the seed of the universe and create it anew with themselves flying about in god mode like a a super flat Minecraft server. I'm gonna go through how I think each villain stacks up based on their individual Pokemon teams, their persona, their overall cojones. But most importantly, my own scuffed thoughts. This isn't gonna be based on the overall evil organization they may goon around with, but the clout of the team they may lead is definitely a factor. Leading the mafia is a far more respectable hustle than leading a group of chavs who stalk your little sister. So these are all 17 of Pokemon's elite gooners ranked. Generation 2 is my favorite, but I'm aware of its flaws. Everyone at this point is. Gen 2 is overrated, seems like a frosty take these days, but I don't listen to anyone. I have no idea how often it's discussed just how much of a lack of a strong villain was really showing in them games. Your rival was the villain. He probably should have been the leader of Team Rocket, the de facto leader. Five minutes into the game and he's already finessing Pokemon from the region's most respected mind. That's definitely Giovanni's boy right there. Got hustle in his DNA. The the guy just never claimed his inheritance, so it got shifted off to some random admin, an executive, some jobber called Archer, Jumbo Sideman, the Rocket Empire, the Pokemon Mafia got shifted to a man who didn't gain sentience until the DS gave it to him. Thinks inverting the uniform color palette to the white Team Rocket uniform, he thinks that's gonna make him a main character, but that only flies with Jesse James, and sometimes the cat if he's not in the mood to let his nuts hang. The thing about that is though, he's still in uniform. Giovanni was the leader. He wore them suits. The Armani because he was the boss. The rocket crest on the breast pocket at most. Archer coming in wearing the Team Rocket away kit because he's a full kit wanker. Three years before Johto, he was wearing a flat cap and rubber gloves. He's trying to take over radio towers when his business should be hamburgling. The only way an Archer led Team Rocket is stealing Pokemon successfully is by legally hiring them out from the Pokemon Stadium rental bin and then ducking the library return fine. Archer can't convince me that's not what he's done here. There's a few serviceable henchmen there, but his team looks like it was made after a trip to the loft and you found a handful of random dusty Pokemon cards that haven't seen sunlight in 17 years. Let's see which ones we still got about. We got Coughing, Golbat, Professor Oak. Oh, Hollow Electrode. That's not, that's all right. He's a bit bent, but that's uh, whatever. Hey, Houndoom. Oh, that's a banger. That's that art is banging. And he's in Let's Go as well. But was this, was this a mandatory battle or one of them special ones that you do on the side in the post game? Because I think I've just aired this entire man's existence. Must have been true to the originals and demoted him to a base form NPC once again. Revoked him of his sentience and restored him of the title of admin, like the glorified bin man he is. Giovanni left some expensive shoes to fill. His unparented son seems like the only one who would have had a chance to fill him. Compared to Archer, I would take Giovanni having a brother from Unova or Alola like, Hey, it's me. Come on, you don't remember me? I'm Giovini. He wears big Hawaiian print shirts. And every time you see him without fail, he throws up his hands and goes to hug you like, hey, and he gives you a big hug. Oh, why not? Make him Tito. Call that Team Rocket Power. You know how ghost Pokemon, some of them can absorb life if you hang around them too long, like Litwick or Grievard. Pierce looks like he just couldn't say no to the Grievards down the shelters. Adopted about 30 of them now, all draining away whatever's left of them. Taking too many self-care baths with about 20 Litwicks lit up around him, leaving himself looking decrepit. Not much life left to absorb from the look of him. You're just licking the plate at this point. You're not getting any more out of that yogurt. You've been slurping the straw off that McDonald's Sprite for 20 minutes now. Litwick just bin it already. Pierce doesn't even look like he wants to lead a team. He didn't ask for any of this. He looks like he's been going through it, but I'm sure he's on the come up since My Chemical Romance got the band back together, but he is still a leader and therefore kind of a villain. Not very evil at all though, is he? I don't detect a single nefarious bone in his impressively ghoulish body. He just leads a group of skinheads. Not even skinheads, he's just assembled a giant horde of monster drinkers. I find it interesting how he's amassed this group. He's the leader 
leader of a team whose sole purpose is to simp for his little sister, while also being the exact archetype of those Nazi pop punk guys who are a danger to girls exactly like his little sister. How could someone look like such a monster drinker, but also look like if they took one sip of that, they'd perish like a Final Fantasy VII boss? His team is solid enough. You know, he'd make a really sound mid to late tier gym leader, I reckon. Because he is. That's what he is. He's not even remotely an antagonist. Why am I even talking about this dragger? If Cassiopeia is the worst villain, the highest threat this country is dealing with, all in all, very good sign for national security in Paldea. If you're talking firepower, she's got far from the weakest team here, but it's really hard to think of Penny as a real villain leader. There's gotta be something sinister going on behind her 20 VPNs. I bet the fur on that Eevee bag is straight from the source, fully authentic. She's ordered some fresh Eevee hides off the dark web, but outside of my head cannon, she's safe. She's clean. Biggest crime she's done is stealing money off the Pokemon League or whatever it was, which I respect the hustle. That's no crime to me. Gita deserves to get her bank account drained. So in my eyes, she's the least villainous one here. The evil team should have been the bullies, not the bullied. I want a toxic ecosystem. I want this school run like Bullworth Academy. Get yourself a proper villain like Gary, who throws hands with you on the roof of the school. Instead, we got this little crypto hacker just contributing to this oddly somehow Scooby-Doo group dynamic. You've even spent half the time eating comically large sandwiches with your large dog but instead oh we got pick me penny with her six evs and not even the best selection of evs you'd think that's someone who walks about with an ev bag everywhere you think they'd know to use an espion at least you'd think the brains of the group the velma would know better but i guess if velma were a pound cassiopeia would be a penny Chairman Rose, just another one of Pokemon's obvious Disney twist villains. Everyone who's played Coliseum has already had their radar for this kind of thing fully calibrated. Oh, you mean that guy in the suit who's been nice to you this whole adventure? Oh, did he turn out to be dodgy, did he? Oh, does he want to summon the impossibly legendary Pokemon? Then it goes tits up on him, did it? Really? Oh, he'd been there. We'd just bury this man in a diglet hole now and get the whole game sorted. Is every region just contained in a bubble? Do they not just share world news? Do they not have Twitter or something? How many judgment days do we have to get in the Pokemon world? How many apocalypse does this world need for people like Chairman Rose to learn his lesson? He's not even one of the intelligent ones about it. He has a whole scheme to reenact something historically documented as the darkest day. Ah, uh, guys, guys, trust me. I know the first time it was a bit of a mare, all right? But 9-11-2 is gonna bang. The lack of foresight is astonishing. Oh, 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 did the huge alien you summon up end up being a bit too difficult to get the leash on? Did you conjure up a second, somehow even darker day, did you? He has the stupidest motive of any Pokemon villain. He wants a near infinite supply of energy, which on paper, that's a very good motive. The world is struggling for an energy crisis. Understandable by Chairman Rose to want to solve this issue. If there was a solution to that, it'd be perfect in our world. His world is inhabited by large frogs that can power entire cities if you tickle them hard enough. And he might be the one steel specialist trainer who somehow has a fairly dead team. Not even the pub running legend Pazaka could salvage him. The guy even turned himself into the authorities in the end. Even he knows. At least he's self-aware here. Yeah, fair one. Ah, oh, just lock me up, boys. Just, that was shocking, wasn't it? Yeah, don't even, don't even do a trial or anything. I'll just hop in the diglet hole. Maxi's team is awful. Honestly impressed that this lot survived the trek up Mount Chimney to even fight you in the first place. But he has something over everyone else on this list so far. He's an actual leader who leads an actual criminal organization, but he's by far the worst out of the more evil bosses. He's a bit of a pencil pusher. You could handily convince me Team Magma's Giovanni was down in Scotland playing golf while all of Hoenn was going on, and Maxi just pulled an archer and assumed he could run the business. And Archer is just a variation of Maxi, who I do like considerably more because I didn't appreciate it enough at the time that we had a villainous team of pirates. There's a lot more legroom there for Pokemon piracy. I'd definitely welcome another pirate Pokemon group who don't have to share the spotlight. He's been held back by Team Magma's existence, if anything. Sharpedo and Muck are also gonna outrank Maxi's team because Archie strikes me a lot more as a man of action. It just took him ages to get there. Back in the early 2000s, he was looking 
looking like a jobber, looking like Giovanni's water boy. The parallels between both of their team's goals is very interesting. They both have these larger than life objectives to expand the sea or increase the landmass of the planet. Archie wants the world to drown and be rid of humanity. Maxi just wants more space for his camera up to mud wrestle in or something. And what does Maxi end up doing? What's his grand scheme? To sunburn the planet. But what did they think was gonna happen? I guess there wasn't any track record of this kind of thing like Chairman Rose had, so maybe I can excuse him a bit. But I can tell you about the pair of them, as dense as each other. Gosma, I have to say, a bit of a top G. He looks like he would G-check you and everything, not very successfully, but he'd laugh it off with you afterwards and ask you for a lighter that he'll never give back. Gosma may not be the most evil or powerful or even best dressed, but I can respect it because he's not out for some insane life goal. He doesn't even want money, really. He exists purely to be a menace. Gosma just wants a bit of the crack for him and his teammates. Bunch of pranksters. He is a misdemeanor, a slap on the wrist of a Pokemon villain. Someone who fronts that he's about that life, served jail time, knows people on the inside and that, when the most criminal thing he's really done is pirating a UFC event on a Twitch stream. As lovable as he may be, he just can't stack up against most of Pokemon's villains. He leads a bunch of people who failed the island challenges. So canonically, they're a team of geeks, a jabroni squad. He has no real clout or authority. The region views him as a slightly more threatening village oaf. But I've gotta say, Gosma has a lot of charm going for him, and his team's fairly solid, especially for a buck specialist. Gosma, he's just shady at best. The full tracksuit, the fake Yeezys on, trying to shift you Pokeballs, he's painted to look like quick balls. He'd be that guy who goes around all the pubs constantly on the hustle, trying to sell off pirated DVDs or Borat. Gosma's your man who designs all of them shirts or cartoon characters looking like gangsters. He just wants to dick about with the region, with his ganger misfits. What's not to love about the guy? Cosma is the bully Penny should have been. Colorus pulls an archer and takes the helm of the new Team Plasma. I rate gamer Neo Plasma, but I wasn't sure if he counted properly, if he was just another archer to get to Giovanni. I thought Colorus, I thought he was just like, gets his accountant or something is smithers colorus doesn't look evil if you told me this man led something called team plasma i think he was gonna sell me a 60 inch smart tv on paper he had archer potential but metagross magnazone rotom wash he owes some people money carrier knows about with him if you count the sun and moon battle tree he even gets porygon z alolan muck so if you're talking just a 1v1 he's looking to be a top five villain trainer potentially and even then being the second well arguably third in command a team plasma is far more prestigious than being the head goon to almost any of the other teams i've mentioned so far he's even gone ahead and outwhipped team aqua with a flying pirate ship chorus is an odd villain because he was fairly successful he captured kiram and he flies about in his pirate ship armed with a cannon that could send civilization back to the ice age yet more often than not he's helping you out he's giving you items he lets you board his pirate ship to give you the opportunity to smack him about even in future games he had the full midlife crisis turnaround after being slapped about by a 10 year old he was taught a life lesson like it's the end of an episode to a humble family sitcom you know he's learned something he now knows that true power comes from bonding with your pokemon not brute forcing it by any means necessary he's a guy who sent an entire city to a frosty grave but at the end of it all he's all like you know we can all learn a lesson from this true power comes from where from within Right, fellas? Please don't send me to the Diglett hole. I rate Lysander a little bit more than the others because he has a presence. He feels like the big bad, the head honcho, all of that. The kind of guy who walks in the room and Beethoven's Fifth Symphony plays out of nowhere. And you just have to act shocked when he turns out to be evil later on. But at the very least, he is evil. And his objective leans less towards the everyone stalk my little sister side of villains. Much more mass genocide side. If you hear of a man who goes by the name Lysander and lack the gut instinct to clock that that is an evil man, you deserve to have your shoes stolen. Time to take him off. Give him here. Give him to me. He's a bit of a return to form, doing textbook criminal activities, siphoning energy from the power plant, stealing from the Pokeball factory, shifting fossils for a quick bit of bash. He just wants a bit of that green and to make the world 
a beautiful. He has to get one of those megalomaniacal things in. On paper, Lysander is just a metrosexual Giovanni. Until you learn his definition of beautiful is wiping out all life on earth except himself and his henchmen. He's making a good run in for the most psychotic person in the Pokemon universe. A man who believes the only people fit enough to walk this earth dressed like Oompa Loompas for Willy Wonka's flaming hot monster munch factory. He's another one of them. Obviously, I've been the villain the whole whole time and you have to be surprised at it but at least he has the self-awareness to know how blatantly villainous he is. He's not a Chairman Rose or the mayor from Coliseum type when they've been nice to you the whole time. Lysander's like, oh Team Flair, yeah yeah of course I'll run that. What, what, are you dumb? Have you been huffing glooms for the past seven badges? Do, do you not see my trim? Who else do you think's running Team Flair? Tiano? You need help to Alakazam stem cells injected into you or something. Jeez, I'm definitely wiping out humanity now. You know, I was in two minds about it until you showed up. You really swayed me. That's it. Planet's definitely getting nuked now. Lysander is a grand old villain, but he's very by the numbers. He's like a six out of ten everything. He has the look, the insane megalomaniac end goal, the sizable horde of goons to boss around. But for a man who wants to wipe out all life on Earth, his pockets aren't exactly deep enough to be given out orders that big, like nearly everything to do with Kalos. There was a lot of potential with Lysander, but it just fell a bit short. It's very hard to take the man that seriously when his whole gimmick is being a reverse fursona of Pyroar, and therefore, like a Pyroar, would be very weak to my own pair of hands. Takes away a lot of the allure there, that he's not really anywhere near as powerful of a man as he presents himself as. Lysamine would be in the upper bracket of the evil spectrum. There's been a narcissistic parent towards your children. That's one thing you need to unpack a little bit. Then there's merging with UB01 symbiont. Becoming one and going straight for the throat. Whipping a cheeky tentacle towards your own children. Then she gets all remorseful in Ultra Sun and Moon. Trying to have herself a sly little. For oh, I have seen the error of my ways redemption arc. How is she going to repent? She's out here singing gospel tunes talking about being stronger and wiser as if in the last game she didn't just try to vine whip her daughter so hard she'd have achieved Volo's end goal and got a little meet and greet with Arceus with her team it's solid but for someone who's 40 plus looking like this I've got to say the professors in Paldea have aged her poorly since generation 7 on a very surface level they have similar objectives invading wormholes gathering these alien like specimens that may be on the other side right and the professors caught every known paradox for near enough. Listen, mean she got one Ultra Beast, and if anything, the Ultra Beast caught her. If she were the least bit successful by comparison, she'd be having a team stacked with Ultra Beasts, like Churo and Sada had for Paradox Pokemon. The only difference here is that the professors were doing it for research. Listen, mean is, oh, well, she's trying to create her own liminal space in the Ultra world. Obsessed. Sleeps in Nihi Lego bed sheets. Now, Buzzsaw, fair enough. I understand neglecting your kids over and running away to another dimension to start a new life with. I understand people have parents who may be like a drunken gambling addict or something, but how could you tell me your mom was a little too preoccupied to raise you because she was too busy jellyfishing? I'll give her some credit though. I mean, the real professors got their own little meet and greet with Arceus thanks to their respective Paradox Legendary. It's not as if Lusamine got crushed between Boswell's thighs and was forced to leave her research in the hands of a robot version of herself. She's still breathing at the end of the day. So who's the real winner there? The more modern Pokemon games, they're following a little bit of a pattern. If the supposed evil team is a bit of a joke, then that means the real Big Daddy villain is lurking about somewhere else. And deeply wedged in the big Paldean crevice is a pair of Big Daddy villains. The professors being evil is one I'm surprised hasn't come up sooner, even though it's just an AI version and it's fuming at you for tripping the alarms. That's still a genuinely good character swerve for Pokemon. A very rare occurrence outside a mystery dungeon. Over Overall, the two professors might lack the collective firepower of a Giovanni or a Cyrus, but as individual trainers, they're arguably the two strongest. Borderline legendary strength-wise across the board, they're not limited to the henchman Pokemon, and they're not limited to a monotype either, but they definitely have the evil of Getsis when they start to glitch out, leaving you and your friends to perish in a large crater, near enough locked in a giant UFC cage with a feral 600-pound lizard. The professors may have been smart enough to cross the bridge into alternate dimensions, but I guess they were just shy of the brains needed to add the failsafe to their robot selves. Ah, see? There's your problem. You had them set to 
kill son. Unless I'm forgetting someone, it's taken this long for a criminal to actually break the law. The six Pokemon at a time law. Deleting the entire universe may be the end goal. But I draw the line at holding more than six Pokemon at a time. Can't afford another three points on my trainer's license. I think the court might take my ID away. I've already had two fines this month. A fed caught me stroking an Eevee when I already had six Pokemon on me. He wrote me up a ticket. Volo had the right idea, especially hundreds of years back in the Hisui region. The wild west of Pokemon crime. No CCTV about, it's just your word against mine. And everyone loves Volo. Don't even have PCs back then. What are you meant to do? Just hope that you've networked well enough that someone's sound with you dropping off the god of time in their back garden. One of the first men to want to destroy and recreate the world. He wanted to have his little meet and greet with Arceus. The guy's obsessed. Walked into Turkish barber golems like, yeah boss. Uh, give me that Yahweh. And to get his backstage VIP Jesus pass, he contacted Giratina to tear open a space-time rift. What are you talking about contacted? How'd you just slide into Satan's DMs? You know what? Let me just give Giratina a quick bell. Oh, ah, he's busy. I'll just leave him, leave him a little voice note. Y yeah, Giratina, mate. Giratina, how, how you going? Uh, just call up whenever you got a minute. Uh, do you reckon you could open up that little quick little space-time rift? You know, just if you get the chance, uh, no rush, no rush. Uh, and if you can't, that's all right too. Uh, you're a busy man and no dramas. All right, anyway, uh, hope you're good. Uh, give us a bell when you can, mate. Cheers. Volo was well above his time. B was born in the wrong era. Borderline top level champion team followed up with two rounds against Satan. Cyrus and Cynthia are both his spiritual and a guest with Cynthia, actual successor, with a more thought out plan and a full evil organization backing him, it could have been unstoppable. Imagine a Cynthia led Team Galactic. She'd have been having Arceus eating out of a dog bowl. N is a weird case with an ID that says Natural Harmonia Gropius. He was, I think, factory built to lead some kind of cult eventually. But full legal government names be damned, he's somehow one of the good guys. He's unintentionally a villain because he was the leader. She, no, he's the king of Plasma. Never quite had the long, tyrannical reign as king his off-putting Tory granddad gets this Harmonia Gropius had set him up for. He's just a misunderstood little character being puppeteered by the bigger, much more threatening character. But with all of this going on, N probably has the most depth to him as a villain. His face turn doesn't feel forced or weird like Lusamine and Colrus because he is the victim here. N never did anything that was beyond salvation here. You always knew he was a good wee lad deep down. I mean... Except for, you know, on, on the ferris wheel. He might have tried to hold your hand while biting his lip a bit. He got a bit too zesty to you for a second. But when we move, it's alright. He just got mentally hustled by Getsus into thinking Pokemon were slaves to the ball. Which, Mr. Gropius Sr., objectively correct. Don't be listening to the propaganda the Pokemon world's feeding you about all that friendship and bonding stuff. It's all just gaslighting you into thinking they're not just little gladiators for humans. N pretty much got adopted by Mr. Burns. Big mansion, giant toy room, raised by a guy who put all character points into finance and zero into emotion emotional intelligence. And he has this great gimmick of never having the same Pokemon. So collectively, he might be the most versatile character here if you decide to start with him. You throw together a six aside out of his entire PC. You've got any from, from Mamoswine to Scissor to Starmie, Arcanine, Rhyperia, Hippodon, Zora. All of this while mounting Reshiram. Oh, with Team Star bullied a bit? Did Team Skull do the little freestyles and no one cares? Yeah? Well, imagine you wake up one day and your house was destroyed. Imagine if all of your loved ones perished to a hydraulic press. Do you even realize how good you have it? When it's people who wake up one morning and oh, Oh, the universe was destroyed? Because some people have it rough for real. Don't even have the fundamentals of space and time upholding their universe. So maybe... Maybe be more appreciative, because it's sociopaths like Cyrus who want to take away that privilege. Cyrus is when it starts to get actually serious. Even to this day, I don't think the stakes have ever been higher. This man needs far more than his pets getting a good slapping down. Luca would arrest all of the other team leaders and they'd be given a fair trial in court. On site, Cyrus would get compromised to a permanent end. Galaxy's most wanted, a universal terrorist. The guy wants to destroy the universe and soft reset 
start the whole thing with himself as the new Arceus. Ah, Cyrus. Cyrus is the one who just wants the universe to be his Minecraft high school server, and only he gets to be on creative mode. He just wants to be Arceus so bad. Not as bad as some people, though. Nowhere near down bad enough that he's rocking up to the barbers and showing Turkish golem depictions of the Bible for reference. As the spiritual successor to said man, who would have to use old Arceus statues for trim reference, Cyrus had a similar motive, but with a more thought out strategy behind it and had the backing of a large evil team. Only key difference is he massively lacks the individual firepower himself to get the job done by comparison. Obviously, he's just another one of these psychos that comes along every three years or so and fails to destroy everything. His plans to cosplay God fall through, but relatively speaking, for an objective as insane as his, he actually didn't have a bad crack at it. Nah, think about it. He failed overall, but now he's roommates with Satan. He's still hanging out with the gods. He's still in the conversation. Giratina is arguably the Pokemon with the closest connection to Arceus in a sense. Like imagine your life's goal was to become and replace Jesus himself. And somehow you ended up in hell doing a flat share with Lucifer himself. Like you were handed a jumbo L. But it was still kind of in the realm of possibilities if you managed to get that far. Your man is 27 years young, five years older than N. Lusamine has, what, two decades on him? Man, what has happened to this man to be looking this soulless in your mid-twenties? Must have been topping and tailing in them Litwick self-care baths along with Pierce. Cyrus doesn't even care. This is a mentally ill man, eye to eye with the devil. Not a single emotion being processed. Hopefully Giratina can give him some therapy. Uh, he's, he's been about the block millions, billions of years of existence. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of life experience. I'm sure he's very wise. Just pure acceptance. Chilling in hell with Lucifer. They've probably got at least a Greg's down there. I'm sure he's doing all right. The Big Don himself. And I mean Big Don. Have you seen him in Masters? At the stare down of Mewtwo, the guy looks beneath him. As we all know, underneath that suit, looking diesel. Any hand-to-hand -hand combat, no weapons, no items. Put the Pokeballs down and fight properly. Giovanni's sweeping every other villain going. Except maybe the revamped Archie. Not the Waterboy one, the buff pirate. I reckon he'd have a good crack at him. I almost feel like Team Rocket should be some kind of constant entity in the entire Pokemon world. As the UK is a united set of nations, united by criminals, Gala would have been a perfect region to return the criminals to proper form. They really dropped the ball giving us Chairman Rose instead of Tommy Shelby. Giovanni, I feel, has the right amount of evil. He's not just causing mayhem because the only thing that gets him bricked up is breaking the Ten Commandments. But his diesel toned body is filled with many nefarious bones. He fully has the capacity to watch the life leave another man's eyes if it would mean his goals are furthered. And being the Pokemon mob boss, I'm sure he's had to many times. But he's not exactly licking his lips while it's going on. It's nothing personal, it's just business. He only strives for power and the bag. I respect his hustle. Giovanni is out for profit and will do whatever it takes to build his empire. If his body count could be zero, he'd have it be zero. No civilian casualties, no dramas, it's just business. None of them megalomaniac plans to turn the earth flat or put chemicals in the water that are making all the belly bolts gay. As a gym leader, his team wasn't doing too bad if you took into account his collective PC. But then once the World Cup season hits, he unlocks the Seto Kaiba briefcase on monsters. He's an insanely overpowered individual. There isn't really much stopping him from moving back home and getting the old band back together. Who's stopping him these days? Trace? Oh, you mean the Archer of Champions? The ultimate gangster team. Rhyperia and Nido King. Textbook hired muscle. Crocodile? He's still brick breaking them kneecaps. Garchomp and Gliscor stand at opposite ends of the room during business meetings looking menacing, staring you down so you don't do anything dodgy. Gliscor's a bit of a wild card. You go, he can just flip at any notice. He's just waiting for the order to give you the clamps. Now, if you've ever seen those videos of hippos eating, then you know Hippodon is there for interrogation. You gonna tell me where you're hiding you two plane? Or is Hippodon over here gonna have to use crunch on your head like a watermelon?
Giovanni has to be second place here because he's so much less evil than Getsis. This man is comically evil. Sin for the sake of sin. Giovanni has more logic behind his evil. He's evil in the sense of rigging Pokeathlon races for the bookies. Not so much shanking 10 year olds with ice shards, leaving them for dead in a frosty cavern. Let's say if Team Rocket had a rat amongst the ranks, Giovanni would feed him to Garchomp, have that man murdered without hesitation. Getsis would have a child murdered with his bed hands and be licking his fingers afterwards like he scrammed the whole Dorito share bag to himself. I know the AI professors, they tried the same thing, but they're programmed to do so. Getsis had the Arceus given gift of free will and still chose to use that gift to shank up children. Getsus isn't just a mob boss or a misunderstood delinquent who needs a little bit of tough love. He's one of them sorts who gets sentenced not like life in prison. The guy gets one of them, Mr. Getsus Harmonia Gropius, please rise. I hereby sentence you to 16,000 years in prison. 9,000 years good behavior. And then we'll consider parole. You really have to double down on making sure he never sees the light of day again. Man, that evil could easily have a five digit lifespan. Giovanni would get locked away in the prison penthouse. He gets the Xbox and unlimited pot noodle access. Getsis would get chained to the floor in a hyperbolic time chamber. Can't take any chances with this kind of villain because of course Hydreigon is Getsis' right hand mon. To really sell the belief that this evil villain isn't stealing comically large bags of money with dollar signs in it from the casinos. Getsus was about one notch shy from beating N like he's Omni-Man, tries to murder the game's protagonist, manipulates N from childhood straight out of adoption just to use as a pawn, fronts this whole civil rights activist movement to rule the region. Nah, there's no redemption for Getsus. He has arguably the strongest team, leads debatably the strongest faction, and is by far the most sinister man to roam the streets of Pokemon.